Now joining us now, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Good to see you this morning, Congressman. Um, so when you, hear, when you hear about this Oval Office meeting, I know you've reacted to what Michael Flynn floated on Thursday, but that idea apparently got him into the White House, may have been one of the reasons he's there in an Oval Office meeting. We know he can't just walk in. The fact that this was even discussed, your reaction to that? Well, I think it's nuts. I mean, I think, look, if you look at what is being discussed with martial law, and I think there's a lot of people that don't under, necessarily understand what martial law is. They know that it basically sounds ominous, right? Martial law is basically the federal military coming in and suspending the authority of state or local government. So you would have, in essence, the federal military come in and say, we're taking over to rerun an election because this one wasn't to our liking. And it's interesting if you look at the president's uh, statement of administration policy in 2019 on, I think the bill was like H.R. 1, it was a Democratic election bill, which I voted against, uh, one of their big points was that they believe in state and local control of elections, and I agree. And so I think the idea of sending, I mean, beyond you know the, the insanity of the election was completely stolen, we can't prove it, we just know it. The idea of sending the military to end to rerun it would, would be a massive, massive red line. And, and I'm certain the president won't do it. But I think it's certainly worth talking about because people around him are advocating for it. Absolutely. And the fact that it was a discussion and that there had to be you know, this forceful pushback. But it's not the only idea being floated, too. I mean, we've also learned that, that Rudy Giuliani uh, called <laughs> uh, DHS and, and asked about seizing voting machines. There's this whole talk about seizing voting machines, which we know is not in the purview, but even just the fact that that, too, is being uh, floated and the fact that Sidney Powell, as some sort of special counsel, is being floated and that the president was, uh, according to the reporting that we have in, to, to Maggie Haberman, who told us earlier this morning, it was he was pretty serious about it. I mean, what does that tell you about the next 30 days? It's going to be a wild ride. And I think here's here's the problem. I've, I've been I hate Twitter, by the way, but I've been watching it because usually you get the conspiracy theories that then end up making it mainstream within just a day or two. You know, the idea that John Roberts yelled at the entire Supreme Court and forced the real conservatives to vote against the Texas thing. A total lie, total fabrication. But most people believe it's real now. Same with the Dominion voting machine issue, the quote unquote 68 percent error rate that was found in an audit isn't true at all. And you find out that was a human error in a Republican county. But the problem is so much misinformation is thrown out constantly that you lose track of what you ever believed. You forget if anything's ever debunked and you're always on to the next piece of misinformation to the point where now you believe that somehow on January 6th, the U.S. Congress can overthrow the results of an election or that we even have a role in determining who the president is. We don't. But there has been some some uh, some not serious people in Congress that have convinced their base for retweets and money that we can, as members of Congress, go out and determine that we just want Trump to be the president again in 2020. So to that to point, uh, you may hate Twitter, but you're on there a, a lot. And a lot of what you do, right, is pushing back on this misinformation, whether it's the president or Michael Flynn or someone else up there. Do you find, though, that you're getting through? I hope so. And, you know, it's like, while I hate reading Twitter, I realize that's where a lot of stuff is happening. And you look at the conspiracy theories, and I think we don't do as a party, as a country, enough to address the conspiracy theories as they come up. Again, the people that believe that the, you know, the, the Pentagon attacked a CIA server farm in Germany that was hooked to Dominion that was stealing votes. There are people that believe this. And, you know, we've got to push that stuff back. So I'm going to continue to be aggressive on it. And I'm going to continue to probably get people making death threats or saying I'm in the pocket of China or I started ISIS. It's fine. But the thing is, in the world of Twitter, people believe conspiracies until they're pushed back on. Well, look, and, and a lot of them are these are deadly serious in some cases. And we've seen, you know, you, you, you sort of joke about the threats, but we know how serious those threats can be. I do want to get your take, too, on this on this cyber hack, which I know you put out a statement on December 15th. And part of what you said was the most powerful weapon, the largest measure of security we could produce right now is some semblance of unity and recognition in one another that we are Americans above all else. Let's be clear. That's not happening. I mean, Secretary Pompeo on no. Friday, which was good, came out and said it's pretty clear that it's Russia. The president immediately pushing back you, pushing back a little bit on Twitter, too. Um, and one of the things that you said is uh, you're not sure why it's so hard to admit. I mean, why is it so hard for the president to admit that Russia could be behind this? I know it's somewhat of a rhetorical question we've been asking for four years. Why is it so hard for the president to admit? Because this is about the country and this is about security. 
Yeah, it is. And I, I don't know. And that's that's why it's for me, it's not a rhetorical question. I really want to know. And, you know, you, you do look at the policies of the administration and they have been very aggressively anti-Russian. We just got uh, I got in the NDA, which may be actually vetoed. We'll override it. You know, Nord Stream 2 sanctions. And there's been this pushback everywhere. And uh, but I, the president has not been able to say one word bad about Putin ever. And uh, so I don't know. It's quite obvious this is Russia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe they did it with the help of China. I don't know. But I know we can't push Russia aside and say it probably wasn't them. And it wasn't that big of a deal. This is going to be the biggest deal that we've had in this country in a very long time. Uh, real quickly, because I also want to get you on the stimulus. But just what are your conversations behind the scenes with your fellow Republicans? Are, are you thinking that we are going to hear more vocal uh, support for what we heard from Secretary Pompeo, from what you know, you're talking about in terms of a unified response? Some. Uh, there'll be some, you know, and I think some will keep their head in the sand until June, January 20th. And and uh, and that's where we're at right you now. You sound like I, you've I've, given up. I've, 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 I've kind of lost hope for having like a big movement of, you know, my fellow Republicans to join me in, in, in this. But that's all right. Everybody makes their own decision. I don't I don't I don't put anything on them. It's just uh, I'm going to do what I think is right. Uh, lastly, in terms of this, uh, this stimulus that we're looking for, I'm still waiting on the language, uh, as I understand it, for the bill, uh, but votes could come today. Are you happy? I'm happy that we've got to something. I, I want to see what's in it, obviously, because we don't know. But uh, it's probably not going to be pretty, but it's better than nothing. It's how government works. I just, you know, we're sitting here, it's December, what, 20th, 21st today. We should have done this, you know, weeks and weeks ago. It's just another problem where the system's broken that we all need to just put some of our partisan stripes aside sometimes. Um, quick yes or no. Uh, Congresswoman Spanberger said earlier she thinks there's a little bit of blame to go around everywhere in terms of this. Do you agree? Yeah, totally. Totally. Congressman Adam Kinzinger, always appreciate it. Thank you. Happy holidays. You bet. You too.